Hey everybody, welcome to today's live stream on MLB The Show 21. Today we're just going to play some more random head-to-head -head games and talk about uh, the upcoming franchise mode series I am looking to do. If you're watching this when the stream is over, you can scrub in the, the bar, the scrubbing bar on the video, and you can find certain parts of the video if you want to skip to the first game or the second game or whatever it is I end up doing here. But thanks everybody for watching. Glad to be live here once again on MLB The Show 21. How's it going? <clears throat> Day three now on the show. Really enjoying the game so far and looking to uh, just jump into a couple more of these matchups today. And once again, the stream is sponsored by PlayStation and San Diego Studios who develop MLB The Show 21, so big thanks to them. They hooked me up with uh, a bunch of stuff and a copy of the game. <clears throat> First time catching a stream. Love it, Dave. Glad you're here. Doing pretty good, Daniel. How you doing? Looking to get a couple hours in streaming and then relax for a bit and be back tomorrow to grind out some more stuff. I have a lot of stuff I want to get around to. <clears throat> Love it, Connor. I want to jump right into a game here. Which one do I want to play? I wanted today's matchups. We had Kershaw versus Darvish last night and it should be Bauer and Snell tonight. I don't know why it's not listing a probable pitcher here for the Dodgers. Maybe it's not updated, but I checked earlier, and it should be Bauer and uh, Snell. As the I think that the uh, Dodgers are going for a sweep. Really long game two nights ago, and then a short game last night. Just two nothing win for the Dodgers. Think the Raiders would be good for a Madden 22 rebuild. Definitely, Colton. There's plenty you could do with that team, and you're in the AFC West. Definitely. Sox versus Sox. Let's do it. Two of you said that, so... I'll play as Boston. Now, is this going to be a seven-inning game? Because this is a doubleheader. We're going to play it seven innings, then. <clears throat> Are those the pitchers today? I'm not even sure if this is the first or second game of the doubleheader. Up against Lance Lynn. Why does it have JD batting leadoff? I've never seen him do that. I don't think. Let's go with this setup here. <clears throat> Thanks for the stream, Kane. Thank you, Alex, for watching. Appreciate the super chat. All right, let's get into it here. A little double header action. This game is going to happen apparently later today. We'll see if we can nail the result here. I'm probably not going to do a Royals franchise just because I want to get out of the AL Central after doing my only MLB franchise in the AL Central. I'd like to switch it up. Do I remember when Nelson Cruz hit an inside the park home run in the playoffs of your Twins franchise? Vaguely. Oh, that's driven a long way to right. Should be fine. No worries. Yeah, I, I loved having Cruz in that series, and then they signed him in real life. I was hoping they'd also bring in Dallas Keuchel when he was available last year. Because I also did that. And now one hit to deep right center. A couple long flyouts. Yeah, I really wanted to make sure I streamed here for the beginning of the show, and as I figure out what it is I even want to do for a series, it's nice to see all the feedback here live and just talk it over with what it is I'm looking for. Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson. 
Rodriguez trying to go one, two, three. Oh, hopefully the Twins COVID outbreak isn't, like, affecting a ton of different players. That kind of came out of nowhere all of a sudden yesterday. Into right field for a hit. Anderson's aboard. Now, hopefully it's not affecting, like, a ton of players. Hopefully every everybody's feeling all right. Oh. Wasn't quite ready for that. The year-to-year -year saves not being included doesn't really surprise me because it's going to Xbox and uh, with a new console generation doesn't surprise me at all. Hopefully it does return. All right. Got three outs, and now we get to hit against Lance Lynn, who wasn't great with the Twins a couple years ago, and then... Resurgence last year with Texas, and now uh, with the White Sox. So I know he's got a pretty good fastball here, 94. We just saw that one at 95. We'll see a sinker, cutter, 12-6 curve, and a changeup. Starting here, Kike Hernandez. Came over from the Dodgers, just like Alex Verdugo. <clears throat> Are you guys been playing the show this weekend? I see the pitch sequence here. Does Is there anything that shows... Okay, that's right. So, four fastballs so far. Oh, I know Verdugo had a big hit against the Twins in that last series. Sox took two or three. Yeah, the show's coming to Game Pass. That's really interesting. Xbox Game Pass is one of the best values in gaming. And it's not even close as we pull that one down the line. Really good battle there to start the day. Hernandez aboard. Earn ourselves a single there. Let's go. Uh, Dragon, it should be available if that's the edition you pre-ordered. I think the Jackie Robinson version had the early access ah chasing one here with Devers who has hit a bunch of home runs here this season he had a nice stretch like uh, in the last week Lynn's all over the place probably not getting the Texans week one today tomorrow though tomorrow We rip that one into right field, and it's going to go a long way. And it hops over the wall. We have ourselves a ground rule double. First two reach here for the Red Sox. But we got to do some damage here. I haven't really had high-scoring games yet here in what I've played so far. Takes me a little while to get my offense going, but now a chance to get on the board early. J.D. Martinez going to left. And we should have a good tag up here. And we're up one nothing. Batting four. Not shortstop. Xander. Alright, now Xander Bogart's trying to bring home Devers. Ah, got jammed a bit. That's going to be flied to right. So 
So it looks like this is up to Christian Vasquez now. I'm not starting my MLB series today. I'm not ready for that. I don't even know what team I want to be yet. These games are just for me to try out different teams and to just get some games in. Um, and get some content up for the show. Alright, well we had a couple good swings. We get one on the board. Good recovery there by Lynn. And now we got Luis Robert, Gold Glove winner last season. And that one, it might be out of reach. We got to die for it. No. What base running settings do you I do I use? Well, I haven't touched them. So whatever default is. So my base running Are there a lot of settings for it? Assist, default. I don't know a lot about uh, the other settings. Ooh, way out in front. There we go, good fastball on the outside. Really got comfortable with my pitching yesterday. I was pitching with Otani and Coors, and I had a bunch of strikeouts with him. Adam Eaton, had him Eaton batting sixth. He hasn't done that this season, has he? There we go. We're ahead in the count. And now can we get him to chase? Remember, too, it's a seven-inning game. This is one of the live play now ones, and the White Sox and Red Sox are playing a doubleheader today, so this is a seven-inning game. It didn't have to be, but I made it that way. Hard to say on first episode. Like, I have to know the team and stuff to get started. So I'll be trying to figure that out this week, and then hopefully it's not too long before we're starting to rebuild the team. I don't think I'll do a custom expansion team. That was an idea that people had, and I think it would be a lot of fun, but I don't think I want to do it for this project. Bouncer up the middle. And retiring Eaton. Nice play. Now Madrigal. They do have pulse pitching. Yeah, it's an option. I just prefer using meter. I do want to try out that pinpoint pitching a bit more, but I couldn't get it down trying to practice with it yesterday. And a bouncer over to third. And two solid innings here for Eduardo Rodriguez. Maybe a week or two? Yeah, I'd say that's probably pretty re reasonable. I haven't locked anything in. Uh, Giants are definitely a possibility, though. Along with the Rockies, Diamondbacks, Mariners, Orioles, Marlins, Rangers. Those are probably the main teams I'm looking at. Now we have Alex Verdugo. Not much there. Rounding out to first. Oh, I know. A Roseman in that first game. That preseason stream was a lot of fun. I've never streamed the preseason before on that channel for uh, any of those rebuilds. 
but I really enjoyed that. The stream went longer than I thought it was going to, but it was also a lot more fun than I thought. Been pretty patient here against Lance Lynn. We get a nice count here. 3-1. See what he gives us with Marwin Gonzalez. Couldn't have missed that by much. There we go. Got a base runner here for Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro. And Lynn just keeps missing the zone. Oh, I like that milestone watch. Like, they're popping up a lot of good info in that uh, scoreboard area, I've noticed, in these games. We left that sinker up. First strike out there for Lance Lynn. Should have swung at that last one. I just didn't get anything there that I was uh, specifically looking for in that AB. Alright, we're through two, one nothing. And another one here. See, I couldn't get the ground outs the first couple of games I was playing, and now I seem to be getting the pitching down. So you say a lot of franchise uh, YouTubers have done already the Orioles and Mariners a lot. I'll have to look through a lot of the farm systems and figure out exactly uh, what makes each team interesting. Oh no, couldn't cut it off. That's going to be trouble. At least two, maybe three. And it looks like with one down, runner at third. <clears throat> All right, trying to keep it one nothing now. Grandal, deep left. Oh boy, it's gone. Socks up two to one. I did take a bad angle on that triple. The first step was off. If I had a good first step, he wasn't going to get to third. Who was the one guy? Thank you for becoming a new member on the channel. I appreciate that very much. Thank you for the support. And that one is way out. All right, we try to bounce back. Missed my spot there with the cutter. It was right over the middle. Missed it again, and Abreu has a single now. Three straight hits. Got to get this fixed. Runner goes. Ooh, perfect. Ooh. 
Now, do they have... Uh, is this like the base stealing mechanic you have to use where it slows down like that? Because I don't think I prefer that. And now, an easy little pop-out. Get out of that inning. I don't think I'll be doing anything on Diamond Dynasty. I'm not really into the card collecting modes here in game. Not my thing. I will donate $10 for every home run you hit. Love your videos. Ah, oh, your money might be safe. I mean, I haven't really been hitting the ball as well as I'd like to. Ooh, that was probably one I should have offered at. That could have been called. I'm being pretty cautious in this game. Ooh, almost got it down the line again with Hernandez. I'm fouling off a lot of these fastballs, and they're they're hittable. I should be putting these in play. So another long at bat, and it's just gonna continue. Pitch count getting up there already for Lynn. He's throwing like 15 pitches to Hernandez alone. Ah, oh. yeah, those inside pitches hitting with righties, I always have struggled with those. I hit a lot better with lefties. I have no idea why. Never mind. I hit bad with everybody. <clears throat> Wish I didn't waste that first one. All right, two down. What's going on, Rashad? How you doing? Well, what kind of team do you want to do a franchise with? Like, what kind of challenge are you looking for? Do you want, like, a middle-of-the-road team, a team close to a championship, a team far away? Didn't miss anything, Connor. Well, you might have missed the Sox scoring two runs. Grandal went yard, but that was about five minutes ago, so maybe you saw it. Mm. Alright, to the fourth we go now, and this is a seven-inning game, remi remember. Two quick strikes to Moncada, who was in the Red Sox organization, right? Because that was the Chris Sale trade. I did have a lead, yes. It was very temporary, and it should have been more when I had second and third, nobody out in first. Eh, it's a base hit into center. You're not too late. We've only been live here for about 20 minutes or so. Good takes here for Eaton. And then he turns on one. We got one for sure. That's it. Thank you for subscribing, Michael. Glad 
Glad to hear it, Willie. That's a long time. A real long time now. NCAA 14's old now. Very old. It's like an antique. It's a classic game now. Sure doesn't feel like it's been that long, but we're approaching eight years. Go foul, I can't get to it. There we go. All right, still only two runs allowed for Rodriguez. We got to get something on the board now. <clears throat> Episode 51 tomorrow. Xander Bogarts. We already got Lynn's pitch count pretty high, but we're not doing enough. How many hits do I have? Two. First two batters of the day reached. Then a sack fly. And nothing since. I don't anticipate playing Road to the Show. <clears throat> I only have time for so much, and I'm going to spend it on franchise. Are you excited that they are finally starting creating a new NCAA football game? Mark, I'm looking forward to it. I got lucky on that. But after how much time has passed, I just don't know, like, is it going to have, like, a true dynasty mode? Are they going to put the work in to rebuild what we love about NCAA? Or is it just another card collector ultimate team game? Because I want to play dynasty. I want to build teams, and I certainly don't want a dynasty mode that has anything less than 14. Bogarts down the line, they call that fair. It's going to get into the corner, and we should get two. There's a double. Personally, I think the show is like the best sports game. I mean, as far as, like, me enjoying simulation, franchise, and everything, like, I I've always enjoyed the show because the gameplay is so solid. All right. Runner is scoring position now. We got to bring him home. Lance Lynn's about to throw pitch 60. He only has nine outs. And now that one gets away, and Bogarts will move up to third base. So now we'll take a sacrifice fly. We'll take whatever we can get to bring him home. And that's going to be in the air. And it's going to be plenty deep enough. I think. Because he had the turn like that. <clears throat> two to two. Both runs have scored on sack flies. Alex Verdugo. Can you create domes? You know, I didn't try that. I don't know. I only messed around with an outdoor park. I don't know that you can do domes. I don't think so. I'm the same way, Connor, and I think, like, if I get into NHL and I like it, it's mostly going to be because just franchise is fun, and that kind of opens the door for me getting interested in, like, the game in general. <clears throat> Have you started thinking about what school will be the first one you rebuild? As far as NCAA goes, the next college game, no planning as far as anything goes, Victor. I mean... It's hard to say what the game is even going to be all about or how deep it's going to be or what schools are in it, so I'm not even thinking about it. You can create domes? I've never uh, thought about that. I don't think I would want to create a dome. I like outdoor baseball.
All right, so we do get our run back to tie the game. And now we got 8-9-1 due up here for Chicago. <clears throat> In the air to right... No problem. Now that left you that outside that's ball. Good fastball there from Rodriguez. He's thrown only sixty to this point. the middle and there's the shift taking away a hit playing right behind second base you click in the right stick you can see your uh, defensive alignment and everybody's ratings And now Grandal, who hit the home run to put the White Sox on the board. DJ South. Oh, you just missed uh, the first two runs these teams have scored. It's the first game of the stream, though. Glad you can make it. We started the day with uh, a double and... Uh, or what was it? A single and a double? That gets through. Scored one run early, then Grandal hit a home run a couple innings earlier. And now Abreu wants to do the same, but it won't have the distance. We've scored two runs on two sack flies. Nothing spectacular, no long balls for me yet. Yeah, I've been watching... Uh, this stretch that Acuna's been on. The Braves, the whole team kind of started slow the first like five, six games. And then Acuna's just been unbelievable ever since. Alright, bottom five. And this, uh, for anybody just joining, this is a seven inning game. Because uh, this is... Uh, one of the play now live games and they're going to play seven innings today so i'm playing seven innings in this one what's the meter above the outfielder's head that's the throwing meter for your accuracy Just missed that one. Just missed that one too. Didn't hit that one well enough. Good timing. Any tips to have good plate vision? Well, I don't have great plate vision, but having a camera that you're comfortable with is really important. But, um, definitely get into practice mode. In practice mode, you can set up who you want to pitch, what they pitch, and where they pitch it. And you could have them, you know, you could just have a guy throw change-ups low, like, a couple dozen times, just to see what that looks like. So, get into practice, mess with the cameras, find something you think you're comfortable with, and just take some practice cuts. Really, you're going to learn through experience in this game. And it's going to take a lot of time. And eventually, you rise up in the difficulties as the game gets easier and you get better. Do you just press X when you want to release? Yeah, it's just a timing mechanic. One button, hold. Up the middle, won't get his first career hit. 
This game requires a lot of reps to get comfortable. We've had a couple of good at-bats here with Hernandez. Lynn's thrown 80. In the air to right center field. Easy play. We'll keep Rodriguez in, but I think we will get somebody warmed up. Was that a bunt? Or like a check swing? What hitting settings? So I use the most basic settings there are. These aren't default or anything, but I don't like having to aim with the stick and swing with like X. I don't like doing the analog swings where you have to like load and then time your swing. I have it the most simple it can be. I have it on directional, which means I use the left stick to focus on inside or outside swings, and I don't even normally do that. And then button. I just hit X to swing. It's literally the simplest setting, and I don't have any PCI on. I don't like having to aim anything. I just want to time the swing and let the ratings do whatever they're going to do for the batter. I'm just not very good at any other setting. Oh, over his glove. Sharp single for Moncada. Oh, definitely. Like, and start at lower difficulties, too, I would say. Maybe a step above rookie or even try rookie if you just need to uh, get comfortable with that. It's not like Madden where it's like if you know a little bit of what you're doing, you can play all pro, all Madden. Like, in this game, you should be starting a little bit lower and uh, raising it as you get better. And that's why they do have, like, dynamic difficulty settings on by default. Because that's how most people are going to get better at the game. Nice little double play here we've turned. Nice bare hand. Thank you, Manolo. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you for becoming a new member on the channel. I appreciate that very much. Happy to have you here. I pretty much play the same way. Yeah, I mean, that's how, like, baseball games all used to be. Hitting was so simple, and over the years, they've introduced more mechanics, but they let you choose what you want to play with. And, I mean, I grew up hitting X. So, I like to hit X. First baseball games I played were like MLB 2000, 2001, All-Star Baseball 2001, 2002, MVP Baseball, and then the show came out like 05, 06 time. It's a game that takes a lot of time. I'd start on Veteran or Dynamic. And uh, it's one game where I think practice really matters. Get in practice mode, especially with how good it's set up in this game. Devers down the line. This one's probably going foul, but it's got a shot. It's gone. Rafael Devers showing off the power this year. It continues here in the show. Any tips for pitching? Uh, is using power swing ever really worth it? Yes. Typically, when you're ahead in the count with good power hitters, it can pay off. Especially if you're really trying to make sure that you're swinging for the fences. Any tips for pitching? Um, 
try not to be too like mix up your pitches your locations and stuff well and don't throw you know sliders and curveballs high and um, definitely don't throw everything in the zone I was playing a little too much around the zone the first day I was playing and they were just hitting everything and I couldn't figure out what was wrong and then I saw like oh I'm throwing like 44 strikes to 10 balls like they're just jumping on everything in the strike zone so I just started to use a little bit less of the plate and I was okay you know if we had a a couple misses or whatever and now I'm getting weaker ground ball outs and everything shouldn't have swung at that but Martinez is so strong I got away with it exactly like DJ Self said, if you're going to do a power swing, you're increasing your chances at a home run, but decreasing your chances at just getting like a sharp hit somewhere. You might end up with more fly outs, but more home runs. It's a risk reward deal. And likewise, you can hit circle to hit, and it's a contact swing. You're more likely to hit the ball. Like if you're down in the count, two strikes, and you're hitting with a contact hitter anyway, just optimize for contact. Try to put it in place somewhere. And hit circle. Number 34, For pitching, I would try to say to throw your pitches with as full a blue circle as possible and mix up your pitches. Yeah, that, that blue circle that DJ South is talking about, that's your confidence. So right now, the pitcher that just came in, Michael Kopech, he's most confident in his four-seam fastball. If he's throwing a bunch of change-ups, he's less likely to be accurate. So if you want to get your change-up going... You just have to find times to do it and don't necessarily throw them over and over again. If you throw like a ch if you were to start throwing change ups for strikes, getting swings and misses, confidence would go up and it would be more likely that he can hit his spot with that pitch. If you're less confident, your accuracy suffers. And of course, when I was talking about the buttons, I was talking about PlayStation, but if you're on Xbox, I got an Xbox controller over here. Talking about A being your normal swing, and then it would be uh, X for power swing and B for contact swing. This is my blue uh, Xbox One controller, by the way. Three, two, Red Sox. Oh, that's not going very far. Basically a bunt. Let's see if we can get this fourth run across, though. I should have our closer warming up, too. Because we're going to the seventh. This is a seven-inning game. And one thing you can do here, you can schedule to put a guy in. So you don't have to go through as many menus. And also, this is quicker. Just to uh, hit up on the D-pad and do subs like this. Like right now, I have Christian Vasquez on second. I want to get this extra run, but he has 17 speed. I can always play Kevin Plawecki as a defensive substitute in the seventh inning. But I could bring in a bit more speed with Franchi Cordero right now. And that's what I'm going to do. Oh, wait, no, JD's on base, not Vasquez. I'll just keep Martinez. All right, what do you think? Do we substitute? Should we bring in Cordero? He can play left field, obviously. Give us more speed right here. Just if they can tie the game, we're not going to see JD hit again. So you make the call. JD at second base or Franchi Cordero. <clears throat> Zone hitting is very helpful. It, if I think it depends on the person. 
you might be able to read pitches and handle zone hitting. All right, everybody's saying, most people saying JD, so we're going to keep JD in the game. Never know if they can score one run and extend this thing. Saw that slider left up, but a bit out in front. See those inside pitches? My timing is always so late on those. Every now and then, I have a couple of days where it's like I can handle that no problem. But it's hard, especially at 99 miles per hour. Oh... Man, that could have been pulled into right field. Just got unlucky there with the uh, contact. Exactly um, what Max said. I believe that the settings that I play on will give you the most ratings-based experience outside of just watching the games play because I'm not aiming the left stick for anything. So, it's looking at the player's plate vision rating to help determine, like, quality of contact. And then their contact and power, obviously, to determine exit velocity, launch angle, that kind of thing. So, it's all about your preference. This is obviously how I like to play sports games. And I've said before, like, if Madden had a setting where, uh, you know how 2K has, like, true shot percentage shooting? So, when you shoot, there's not, like, a meter you worry about. It's all about the player's ratings. I wish Madden had that for kickers. I would never kick again if I had a, a good, like, setting in the game that just had every kicker's abilities... Dial down to percentages at certain distances. I wouldn't kick a ball again. No kick meter. I just want to watch it play out. That's how I'd love to play the game. No! Alright, to the ninth we go. Barnes coming in. I haven't played Forts in a while, but... I do love that game. Only racing game I've really played recently is uh, Gran Turismo 5. Not doing Texans franchise today, no. Tomorrow. All right, one and two here to Adam Eaton. I want to see this knuckle curve on display. Nope. I'm throwing that curveball again. Yes! My favorite baseball player would be Byron Buxton for the Twins. I'm a Twins fan. And his speed, his defense, he's just one of the most exciting players. It's not often you see a player, like there are a lot of fast players, but what Buxton can do when he's on base, combined with like his power and what he does defensively, like... That's not wasted speed. He's not just a guy that's trying to beat out infield singles. He, you know, was doing that for a lot of his career, but as the hitting has gotten better and the power has increased, like, he's becoming an awesome player, and he's 
most fun player on the Twins to watch. What do I think about Josh Donaldson? Definitely like when he's in the lineup. The thing I noticed immediately, and I haven't been able to watch him play for the Twins a lot because of injury, but uh, the ball comes off his bat just different. Oh, another one looking for Barnes. When he makes contact, the ball explodes. Like, his singles are fun to watch. And his defense is obviously excellent. Like, the Twins have Donaldson, Angleton, Simmons, and Byron Buxton. Like, defense should be fun to watch all year. As far as players on other teams to watch, I probably enjoy watching Mookie Betts the most because he's so well-rounded, steals bases, hits home runs, doesn't just have to hit home runs. Just had a game-winning catch last night. You win the game right there? What happened? I've had a couple weird sequences with these animations here in this game. We should have won the game right there. I wasn't able to control him. It bounced. I fielded the ball right there. He missed it. And then I couldn't control him past this animation right here. I was no longer in control. That seems to be something that's got to get fixed. And that should have won me the game right there. Come on. Do I want to load the bases for Jose Abreu? What do you think? Big called strike there. I do think the defense does need a little bit of work here. And hopefully in the, like, the next patch or something they can fix some of these animations. Trying to win the game here, everybody. Took the curveball. Didn't get it where I wanted it to go. Barnes having to really work for this save now as we get Jose Abreu. I'm going first pitch curve. Please don't leave it up. Oh, no. I got away with it. Oh. <gasps> All right, oh, two to Abreu. Out in front, ball game. Red Sox get the win, 3-2. And now I'll be wondering how this one plays out later today. They got a double header. In that situation, you should tap, circle. Defenders touching the bag has always been a huge problem. So not uh, using the left stick at all? I think you're right. I think you're right. If you're close to the bag, I think that's the easier way to get there. I'll have to try that out next time I have a grounder to first. Auto fielding, manual throwing is the best... For animations, okay. The final line score for our ball game tonight. Right now, White Sox are winning game one. Three runs, five hits, one error. They left three men on base. That one is Dallas Keuchel pitching against. Two runs on eight hits, no errors. They left seven. Who's pitching? Tanner Houck. Two hours and fifty minutes. Then later today, this is saying Martin Perez versus To Be Determined. So maybe it's not the same matchup. Yeah, I think tapping circle there. I'm sure I, I think I've done that before. Because I can easily picture that. 
So we got the win. Devers goes yard. Also gave us a double. Rodriguez went six. Only two strikeouts, but we kept the ball in the infield for the most part. Did a pretty good job. We score a little seven inning victory there. Pirates, you want to see how they play? I got you, Connor. Either as them or against. They play the Brewers today. I don't want to play against the Brewers because I just don't want to face their pitching. They are uh, pitching with Freddie Peralta today, so I don't want to strike out to him a bunch. Let's go Pirates and Diamondbacks. Two of the teams I'm considering here that don't have great records. And this will be a regular nine inning affair. And you bet I want to hit with Cabrian Hayes if they're going to let me. But he's hurt right now, so it's not an option. So basically, your most exciting player right now for the Pirates isn't active at the moment. Play in the rain. Ooh. Can I... I'm actually interested in doing that. Just to see what it looks like and whatnot. I'll even quit out to fix that. Pirates and Diamondbacks. We'll just run it back here quick. Pirates have one of the best parks. It's cool. Keep in mind their park plays uh, very much a pitcher's park. So it might be a little tougher to have high scoring, high home run affairs. Can I choose the weather? Presentation. Oh, what's this hybrid? I'm going to choose broadcast. I want to see what that does. How do I choose the uh, weather? How do I edit that? Oh, maybe if I go here and it's not live stuff. I was using live rosters. This should fix the problem. I should be able to use Cabrian Hayes. Here we go. Let's do an early day rainy game. Broadcast theme. Because I notice like every time we get into a game here, it is, uh, you're going to play Mad Bum today, okay? And we're going to play Chad Cool. And we are definitely going to be wanting to play Colin Moran. I'll have Frazier come off the bench. I feel like playing Eric Gonzalez as well. All right. I kept noticing like we get into games super quickly and it wouldn't really show any sort of presentation. I didn't realize that was like a setting I had to change. You should do a Marlins franchise. They need help. They do. We'll see. Here we go. This is more like it. Kristoff, how you doing? 
Glad you can make it to the stream today. A lot of uh, viewers from Germany the last few days. <clears throat> I'm curious. Is Max Kepler like a very popular athlete in Germany? He's from Germany. He plays for the Twins. He's a good player. I like him a lot. Good power bat and right. <clears throat> Shout out from Jakarta, Indonesia. Let's go. All over the world here. Normally work overnight and can't make the stream, so glad I could today. Awesome. Glad you can make it. Having a fun time streaming this weekend. It's been really fun. So here we have one of the only power bats we have to worry about in this lineup. This is Colt Calhoun. Just got done with a round of golf. Sounds like a good Sunday to me. One day I'd like to get into golf. I'm getting old. I gotta start golfing, I think. On the ground, right into the shift. Oh, never even heard of him. Wow. He's not like a superstar player, but he's a solid starting player for the Twins. Kepler is known by baseball fans, but he's not a common figure in Germany. That makes sense. What about Moritz Bowringer, who was drafted by the Vikings and, whoops, then switched to tight end with the Bengals? Was on their practice squad for like a year? First German-born player, I think, to be drafted in the NFL? Or maybe not German-born, but he didn't go to college and he came from the German Pro League. Runner goes. Not the best throw. That's close. Oh, we got him! Good day. Ever consider the Rangers as a franchise option this year? Definitely. I am considering the Rangers. And I am close to where their AAA affiliate plays, actually. On the ground here. Got a range with this one. Nice throw. Let's go. He's a little more popular because his story was incredible, but I think nobody remembers him anymore. That was a while ago. I think we're talking like Five years ago, that was a story. Already. What fielding camera do I use? Whoops. I use... Retro. Yeah, when you, if you're going to start playing the show, especially if you've never played before, you got to experiment with all the cameras for everything, the hitting mechanics, the pitching mechanics, the fielding mechanics. Like, you can customize this game a ton. Sometimes with these sports games, you're like, all right, I have to dial in the sliders. In this game, you have to worry about the settings, I think, more so than sliders. 
Nice cutter. Oh, man. Really like that pitch. You should try a no-hitter challenge. What would that be all about? Trying to throw a no-hitter or getting a win with no hits and just getting walks and hit by pitches and stealing bases. If I had like nine Byron Buxtons, I might be able to do it. And then I have to have like Shane Bieber, Jake DeGrom pitching. So here is one of the fun young players for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Cabrian Hayes. Does have uh, probably the most uh, balanced hitting ratings here out of anybody on the roster between contact and power. Sixty-eight contact versus lefties, forty-eight power. Still very young, still high potential player. Throw a no hitter. I've thrown a couple. I threw one with Lance Lynn actually. And the Twins franchise. Ooh, this change up uh, has me way out in front. Batting third. First Colin Moran. Moran. I will be continuing the Super Mega Baseball series, though. Ooh. Over on the second channel. Probably just got to be... Uh, a little more patient here hitting off Bumgarner. The velocity is nothing special. Strikeout looking. Let's go on to the second now. There should be like more graphics and stuff popping up with me going to the broadcast uh, um, presentation option. David Peralta. Oh, over third base. Gonna cut it off here, thankfully. I believe I did throw on with Dallas Keuchel as well in that series. I had a couple no-hitters. Driven foul. I'm excited to get a new one underway, though. I've missed playing the show for the last year. But I really wanted to focus on the Broncos series. Into right center field, and we might have our first run of the ball game. That is going to be an RBI double. That's Eduardo Escobar, who's been hitting for power this year. One of the leaders in home runs in the MLB. There we go. Keep the runner at second, get the first out, and now let's keep it 1-0. And I'll let some of these uh, broadcast graphics play out. This is always nice to know like what's there for when I'm recording franchise videos. Surprised he went after that one. What else will he chase? How about a slider away? It's a hard one to lay off. 
Oh, how do you swing at that previous pitch and take the last two? There we go. It'll advance the runner. World Series predictions? I mean, I know it's going to be super common, but I got to think the Dodgers and the NL. They're just so deep. There's so much pitching. The team is just so good. They don't even need Cody Bellinger. Nice. From the AL right now, I would probably have to predict... Oh. Let me look at some teams. Red Sox are playing really well, but do you think they can sustain it all the way through? Like, the AL doesn't have anybody that's anywhere close to the Dodgers level. I mean, AL's kind of weak right now. It's really up for grabs. I could see a team like the A's getting hot and going, perhaps. Back up the middle, there's a base hit for Brian Reynolds. Now, Yankees got a lot of work to do if they're to make it that far. They have not played all that well this season. Had a really bad series against the Rays. I am a fan of Out of the Park. I've never played Football Manager, though. I know uh, that's a game a lot of people like, but I don't know much about uh, the sport. Glad to hear it, Mackenzie. These streams have been a lot of fun. Very relaxing. Thought about it. All right, a chance for Polanco here. 3-2, runner on first. And he misses. <clears throat> we'll draw the walk. The first two are aboard for Anthony Alford. 55 contact, 35 power. If that's a 95 mile per hour pitch, it's perfect timing. But it's not. I don't know when this series is going to start. It could start later this week, but it'll depend on when I find a team and then what my plans are for the first episode. That's going to center field. We're going to challenge going home and got it. Whew, that was close. Two really sharp singles to center and a walk. Yeah, there have been some issues with downloading stuff from the vault. There might have to be an update or something before that's fixed. They have a Formula One management game coming? That's really interesting. What would all go into that? I don't know a lot about racing. Hey. 
It'd be like uh, when to change tires and when to pit, when to fuel up. Maybe when to get more aggressive, try to go for some passes or something. I don't know what all would go into that. But I like management games like that. Just in general. Oh yeah, it is the pitcher. I'm sorry. I wait, no, I'm not it's not the pitcher yet. This is the catcher. This is Stallings. Another walk. The first four reach. Struggling to find the strike zone. Hitting is hard, but it takes practice. You can get there. I mean, I'm even hitting a lot better now all of a sudden. Oh, close one there, but it's a two-run single here for Eric Gonzalez. First five reach. This is my best inning of hitting, and it's been with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And now we're probably going for a bunt. Ooh. They got the out at second base. We do move a runner up to third, though. I have playing out. I have played out of the park baseball before, not a ton. Um, right now, I'm not considering a series. I just don't think I have the time to do it. In addition to everything else I'm working on, create your own team, select drivers, work on tactics, develop your car. That's pretty cool. I know nothing about that stuff, and it sounds cool. How do you do shifts in the show? I'll show you on defense, but it's usually done automatically. Back up the middle. Bumgarner should be able to start a double play, or it's going to be thrown into the... The first row. <laughs> this team is falling apart before our eyes. And our run scores. Let's go, Pirates. Not advancing. Texans week one tomorrow. In the air, a perfect swing from Hayes. My timing could not have been better. But we fly out to deep center. Bumgarner, we know he can hit a little bit. That was a rough second inning. First five all reached. Come on, Chad. I guess I threw that one high. I'm 3 and out of Bumgarner right now. We can't walk the pitcher. Ooh, we come back to strike him out. First strikeout for Chad Cool. All the way through the order, only strike out the pitcher. Not expecting an amazing outing here from Cool. Oh! Nice play. 
Am I the only one that bats from behind the pitcher broadcast cam? I mean, that's immersive as heck, man. I mean, it's just like watching a ball game on TV. I just don't know how I'd time that up, how I'd learn to hit. I think it'd be really hard to track the ball. Ripped it past first. That should have been an easier play. Oh, he's trying to get two out of it. Wow. They do rule an error at first base. He just missed it. Christian Walker. Pass second base. Looks like there'll be a play at the plate, and that throw is not great. So Arizona gets one back on the RBI single. You actually find it easier to track pitches? It's going to be different for everybody. Whatever makes sense. I mean, whatever works, works. Baseball's not a game where you have to do everything by the book. You see guys with these weird batting stances at times. And now they're going to tie the game. This team needs some pitching. David Peralta goes yard. Come on. I thought this would be like a two to one game. Four to four in the third is the most exciting game I've played yet. Excuse me? Didn't leave. Tried to. Come on, man. Maybe I'm not being careful enough with my pitches. In the air to left. Well, let's try to build this lead up again. Been a huge fan since the start of the Callous Spell series. You have definitely helped me get through college. Can't wait for the next MLB franchise. Thank you, Jackson. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, thank you. Tied at four now, bottom three. A lot of action here in this game. Big, slow breaking ball. Just got a piece of it. Not a very big piece. Change up. Sometimes it's the slower pitchers that are a bit more challenging just because you're so used to a bit more velocity. It all depends if they can change their speeds and if their breaking stuff moves enough. Pass first base, that's going down the line. Second hit of the day, and that's going to be a stand-up double. Nicely done. All the way to 320. Gregory Polanco. With Reynolds aboard, that's going to center field, and we're going to wave him around. 
And the Pirates are back in front. Why is this one ending up so exciting? Most hits I've had in any game? I mean, I know I've had some with the Twins where I was in the 20s. In this game, it's already my best offense. Five four Pittsburgh. I'm ready for more. Been a big fan for a long time. Appreciate all the work you put into these series. Nothing on YouTube has the depth of your Kalispell spell in Denver series. That's what I've been going for. I want to be able to, you know, I like being a hardcore fan of things like, you know, simulation football, and I try to deliver a very hardcore oriented experience. So, you know, my videos, they're a bit longer. If you're going to watch them, you need a bit more time to do it. And maybe some, you know, never get into my content because the videos are pretty big. And I do go into a lot of detail. I focus a lot on minor details and I don't go quick. You know, I take my time with things. And I like having an audience that is very kind of hardcore minded there. You know, I've been a big fan of various games and things over the years and very few have done much to cater to the hardcore crowd and I really want my content to be able to cater to that hardcore crowd that's extremely important to me you know how many games over the years I've been a huge fan of that have completely changed their strategy or their target and just completely uh, changed from what I liked in the first place I don't enjoy things with a casual mindset very much I'm kind of usually all in or all out Obviously, there are some exceptions, but I really enjoy games that are deeper, you know, harder to master. And, um, you know, one game I've gotten into more recently that does a really good job of that is Monster Hunter. I don't think that's a very casual game. Even the new one that's on Switch, like, it can be a bit daunting for new players because the game is pretty deep. And there's a lot to learn. And I like games like that. What's going on, Mike? And thank you for the super chat, Kawhi. How's it going? I know, I talked earlier. This is a pitcher's park here in Pittsburgh. And we have, you know, nine runs already. It's the highest scoring game I've played on the show. And we're only through like three and a half innings. I don't stream on Twitch because I don't stream super consistently and I already have built up my YouTube channel. So it's a lot easier for me to stream and have all my subscribers already here. And generally when I am streaming, it's for a series that I do on YouTube. You know, obviously when the show is new, you know, I'm streaming random games. That's not going to be the case in a couple weeks. When I stream the show, it's going to be for my franchise. It is a beautiful ballpark. I like it a lot. You should consider Diablo in your free time. I actually have. I got it on Switch, and um, I've liked it so far. I haven't gotten super far into it. It's going to be one of those games that I come back to probably after I wrap up some others. And um, it does seem like a fun, a really fun game. And in general, I really enjoy just that, 
that looter mechanic. And I kind of want a couple games where it's like, maybe I just mess around, I have a baseball game on, I'm just relaxing, and I have something like that to play. <clears throat> Solves the age-old question. When two bad teams play, what happens? Lots of points or no points? I thought we would have the very few points. But I've gotten pretty comfortable here hitting against Bumgarner. I've hit his curveball pretty well. Fastball's nothing special. And they've done the same to Chad Cool. I'm liking Next Gen a lot. I know it's hard to find a PS5. Hopefully, we're not like ages away from it becoming to where you can just walk uh, to the store and go buy yourself a console. It's been six months and it's not that. It's still not like that. But I mean, people can't even get 3090s. Can't get any of this hot new stuff. Up next to the pirates. The it's base. that hardcore experience you're looking for. I like the sound Pretty of that. Sure. I haven't had controller issues, Mike. When uh, I got my PS5 and I was looking into that, people were talking about like uh, rest mode causing problems and charging the controller through the system itself being an issue. So I bought the controller charging dock that plugs into the wall. And I've never charged my controller off console. So I've had no problems. I've actually had very few crashes overall on my PS5 too. Bumgarner bouncing back this inning with a solid 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't listen to commentators in my franchises. I turn them off because I don't want their audio in my videos. If I have anything on in the background, it'll be like a YouTube video or a Twitch stream or a TV show I'm watching. Oh yeah, Mike, you like that? You know how it is. Oh boy, beating the shift. Beating the heck out of the shift. That might be a double with 34 speed. All right, then. Cole Calhoun with a very nice play. Does Chad Cool have what it takes to keep him from scoring now? I guess we are third time through the order here. I should get someone warm. Maybe I should have already had someone warm. Ripped it into right field. First and third, nobody down. Now the first base Am I optimistic for the next Madden? I mean, I never have high expectations. I mean, they did add some good things to franchise. They they said the right things last year after um, we made it known just how unhappy we were with franchise mode. So we'll see what they do. I mean, the news we have so far, um, what we learned in their last update with the coaching staff teaser, like that's a cool thing. But we'll see. It's still Madden. Thoughts on the Twins this year? The relief pitching is ruining everything as that's going to be clobbered to left center and it's gone. Oh. Chad Cool having a tough day. Christian Walker with the home run. What the Twins right now, their main problem is they keep blowing leads late. The bullpen has been... Awful. The inning we got the other night from Williams Astadio coming in to just clean up a game that was lost was the best inning relief I think I've seen all year. Seven pitches, three outs for a position player throwing 46 to 71 miles per hour. Ball, 
The offense, I mean, could still do better. We're not seeing a lot from, you know, like Max Kepler right now. Donaldson's missed a lot of time. Buxton's missed some games. The offense isn't scoring quite enough to have uh, room for error with this bad bullpen at the moment. So that's got to get better. Yeah, we can pull uh, Chad Cool now. Jason Shreve will enter. Now pitching for the Pirates. Number 55. Jason. Exactly, Tyler. I love Williams Astadio. He's a fun player. He can play pretty much any position, including catcher. He doesn't strike out much. He doesn't walk much. He puts the ball in play. He's really aggressive at the plate. And he's a high energy guy. You gotta love La Tortuga. Bouncer to the right side. Two down. The batter number 14, second baseman, Cabrera. Can't believe we blew this lead. I had a really good second inning against Bumgarner. And now hopefully we can get a couple solid innings here out of Shreve. Who would I start a new franchise with? Soto, Tatis, or Acuna? I'm not sure there's a wrong answer to that one. Who would I choose? It's tempting to go with just Tatis for the reason because he plays short. Getting that power playing short. We got Hayes up again trying to close this gap. Bumgarner, if he completes this inning, will be eligible for the win. Oh, Acuna has been incredible. He'd be like the league MVP right now. Either him or your mean Mercedes. Going to be cut off here. Not going to get two out of that. Oh. If I knew the throw was going to be that off, I think I would have uh, been able to get two. That was my thinking, DJ Self. Elite young shortstop with good power. All right, Colin Moran. Mercedes has been so good. Will they do a roster update soon for those ratings and everything? Because there's no way that Mercedes is rated as high as he should be. I left at 4-1. What happened? Chad Cool happened, okay? We gave up a pair of home runs. Chad Cool had a tough day. I disagree with that one. I have a single and a double, though, with Brian Reynolds. He scored twice. On the ground to short. Not going to get Hayes, or they do. Almost got two. I didn't think they had time to get that to short or to second. I like Bo Bichette, and he's done pretty good this year. 
So as uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Bichette's had some really big hits lately. Some big home runs. What hobbies do I have outside of YouTube? I mean, I like playing games. And uh, over the past few years, I've been really big into playing DFS. There we go. Out in the out in the right field here. We have two aboard, two down. Go ahead, run at the plate now. We just gotta hit a home run. Anthony Alford. Anthony Alford. Could really use a big hit. About the Giants this coming season, I imagine talking about the New York Giants. Yeah, I'm not a Daniel Jones guy. So, he's going to have to really, I think, uh, bring his game up a few levels if he's to remain that starter. Into right center field. This one is an easy catch. I do like the signing of Kenny Galladay. I thought that was pretty good. Um, Kyle Rudolph, sure-handed, red zone target. Hopefully you get Saquon back healthy again. But I, I think Daniel Jones kind of holds the offense back, even if now they have a lot more potential, and I think their playmaking situation is much improved already. Oh yeah, they got a Dory Jackson. I thought that was another interesting move. A lot of upside if that uh, works out for them. They also took a shot on uh, John Ross. Interesting. So he'll be the Darius Slayton backup, I imagine. Oh, it's definitely a make or break year for Daniel Jones. They'd be wise to spend probably a day two pick on a quarterback two to at least challenge him. Vikings at 14. You like Vera Tucker? I could see that happening. I think right now I would like uh, Christian Derisaw. I'm thinking they're going to end up going tackle. There's just so many good uh, tackles in this class. And um, even if you still like Ezra Cleveland as a long-term tackle, I think that it's a bit difficult to pass this year and he could try another year at guard. I'm not really thinking much outside of offensive line. And on day two, I imagine they're going to go after one of the raw pass rushers and add some depth there. That'd be a good move. And I wonder if they will spend uh, a pick trying to add a third receiver. They don't use like three receiver sets often. I don't think they want to, but their depth is pretty bad. Franz, glad you can make it from Finland. Love it. 
Am I a Slater or Sewell guy? Probably got to go with Sewell, but uh, Rashawn Slater definitely won't be a bad uh, option for whoever ends up with him. I think that Carolina is a very good possibility. This draft class seems kind of low to that. Certain spots it really is. And I really like uh, you know, a lot of hype around the tackles, the quarterbacks, and the receivers. But I think like corner at the top is like super exciting. There are potentially a lot of good number one corners in this class. Hit it hard. Out to left center field. But that sure didn't go far. What do I think about the... Uh, Patriots sticking with Cam. I'd like to see another year of Cam with a better offense and better players around him. They've already changed out everything. So, you know, I don't think we're going to see MVP level Cam again. But uh, I don't think that he was like, you know, the main reason why their offense wasn't super effective last year. They just weren't very good at anything. So... What I have felt that they've been doing is filling holes as much as they can in free agency because they have the money. Cam Newton's not making a lot of money. We talk about rookie quarterback contracts not making much money. Cam Newton's like making less than that. If you draft a quarterback in the first round, they're going to make more money than Cam Newton with where he's at right now in his career. So they had the money to go and do whatever they wanted in free agency. And I think by plugging all these holes with veterans... That they set themselves up to where they have the flexibility to trade up if they want to add another quarterback. Aaron Nola just threw a two-hit complete game. And I thought this could be a solid day for him. The Cardinals don't have uh, the most complete lineup at the moment. They've gotten some good stuff from Arenado. Kind of a slow start from Goldschmidt. I need some guys to step up there. Offense is starting to run a little cold here. I can't believe Bumgarner's still in the game to go six innings, allowing five. What, are you talking about calling the game? This is the show, baby. We got a rain delay. It's so... Is it so realistic I'll have to actually sit here for 90 minutes? You like this? The rain delay. Do we want to warm up a fresh arm? I was already going to bring in um, a new pitcher. Number 56. Carson. Fulmer. So we probably won't see any more of Bumgarner in this game. Kane has to roll out the tarp himself. <laughs> Absolutely not. You can postpone the game or suspend it. I will do no such thing. And that's a 1-2-3 strikeout right there. Yeah, you'll see beach balls on the field. I think rain delays have been in the game for a long time. And in franchise mode, even, I've seen players get scratched just because, like, you know, so-and-so can't play because of personal reasons. Or so-and-so, you know, tweaked a hamstring in pregame. And all of a sudden, they can't play for a couple days. Oh, my. Cruising through this inning.
What do the Pirates have to do to get better? Well, first they have to get some pitching, and then they have to get some hitting. A lot of work to do with Pittsburgh. They just keep throwing lefties at me here. I got to go lefty lefty all day, it seems. Fastball cutter, sweeping curve, and now I got to be ready for a bit more velocity. Oh, I just noticed lower left. I think that's the wind. Six miles per hour in. So my lefty's having even more of a problem trying to pull the ball and get home runs. I was almost the same spot. Why was that a strike and the first one wasn't? Right back up the middle. Played at short. Nice off balance throw. Alright, Cabrian Hayes. Here's your superstar. What do the Pirates have to do? Build around Cabrian Hayes. We'll see if we can build an inning around him here. Not quite. Can I show you the franchise layout? Um, I went through that in my first MLB stream. But I could pop in to just show you a couple quick things. The menus and everything. We haven't had a base runner in a while. Seven hits. That was pretty good when it was like a third inning. And now the offense is ice cold. Colin Moran with a drive to right. This one has a shot. It is back and it is gone. Wait. No? What a bounce off of. It's hard to hit homers here. Like that was a really, really good swing. Let me see that double. Top part of the deck. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh. It's hard enough to hit home runs here. You tell me you have to get like a couple more feet? Ah. Oh. Come on, Brian Reynolds. Colin Moran went yard in real life today. Oppo shot. Yeah, he's got some pop. He homered the other day, too, I'm pretty sure. I know, I have such bad home run luck in this game. We had, like, the closest I've ever been to the foul pole without hitting it. That was the other day. I am looking forward to the new NCAA game, but I don't really have expectations for it right now. 
What I'm looking forward to next is probably whatever 2K is doing with NFL. Isn't that game supposed to be this year? Because we shouldn't be that far away from getting to learn about it for the first time. The draft's coming up. Perfect time to start marketing campaigns. Ooh, I got lucky. New pitcher, Chris Davinsky is entering. And here's Gregory Polanco, two for two, two singles. And our first uh, righty the Diamondbacks have thrown today. So he's got a fastball, mid-90s, can touch 97, change up, and a slider. Ah, already 2 Fighting off these fastballs, 1 and 2 to Polanco. A couple of these haven't been missed by much. Oh, what happened here? What was wrong with that? Just early? Runners can leave early here. Payoff pitch to Gregory Polanco. And it's a bouncer right at second base. Inning over. Arizona still up by two. It has been an intense game. Yeah, Rush Hour. I was hoping to watch uh, them last night, but hopefully they get everything sorted out here quick. They got to see how much it could have spread and everything. Hey, Kane. I've got a new factory job in Hudson. These videos are needed now more than ever to survive my 10-hour shifts. Thanks, man. Hope you're enjoying the new job. I'm glad to help you out here. Oh, there's a nice graphic. So neither pitcher was great, but Bumgarner was able to really get things under control after a while. We've put up a bunch of zeros now, and most of those were like one, two, three innings. Gotta head out and watch the Tigers lose. Have a good one, Kane. Go Tigers. Thank you, Jackson. Enjoy the ball game. Who the Tigers got today? I wasn't checking that game out earlier. Looks like Bieber wins eight innings, 13 strikeouts. Who are the Tigers got? They've kind of had a rough few games here, I know. Oh, they got the A's. Who are the A's throwing today? Keeps bringing up the wrong game for me. Oh, Bassett?
Who are the Tigers got? Matthew Boyd. Appreciate that, Sam. Us in Detroit with four rebuilds going on at once. We're just praying for some production and prospects with guys like Akil Badu. Badu has been really good to start the year. I'm trying to figure out why he's hitting so low. Same with Jazz Chisholm. Like, these guys are two of the like most exciting players right now on two teams that aren't that good. And they just keep batting like seventh. How hard is it to learn how to play this game? There is a learning curve to it. It'll take you some time. But if you love baseball, I think it'll be worth it to, uh, to figure it out. How do you control the pitch meter? So right here, I just select what pitch I want with the icon. I'm going to throw the cutter here. And then I press it once. Well, you can press it, but I hold it, let go, and then press the button. So I'm just uh, hitting what pitch I want, and then I'll hold this into the upper region with, like, how much force I'm trying to put behind this throw, and then it comes back around for the accuracy. Got him to chase it. And there are other ways you can pitch that are even uh, simpler. One button presses if you prefer. Can I pitch with Kyle Crick? Is he uh, an option here? Kyle Crick. You got it. Fastball slider, two-seamer. Okay. Well, guys, we're running out of time here. Haven't scored in a while. New pitcher in the game, Clippard, and that just... Oh! He caught it? Ugh. Weekly hit fly ball. What are they going to give us here for all the info? How about distance covered? 61 feet... At 17.1 miles per hour, he took the most efficient route possible. I just tap it, you hold it. Yeah, because it's the equivalent of like a three-tap system. But if I hold it, letting go is the same as your second tap, if that makes sense. This feels like the most natural way to do that. Mm -mm. All the blackouts, Sam, it's just a thing with TV deals here in this country. You know, there's like different channels have different rights to show the broadcasts. And, um, for instance, I live in Texas. And I'm considered to be in both the Rangers and Astros markets. So I need to have like certain TV packages to watch them. It's just like a rights thing. Um, but I'm a Twins fan. And because I have MLB TV, I can watch any game the Twins play because they're out of my market. Unless they're playing against the t Rangers or the Astros, I can watch them on MLB TV easily. It's actually the most convenient to watch your team if you live a thousand miles away from them. It's literally the best experience for TV. Yeah, I, I, I get blacked out of two teams. I don't think I have their channels either on my TV package. So I don't get to watch the Astros or Rangers very much. But yeah, I'm considered to be in two markets. 
And that's a double play. Can we fix it in the ninth? We'll find out. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Pirates, number 30, Kyle. Hopefully don't allow any more runs. I think two is tough enough. Ooh. Not the best slider. Josh Rojas, he went yard to lead off the Diamondbacks game today. I like Texas a lot. Unfortunately, I've only been here for a handful of months before the pandemic began, so... How was that not a strike? Haven't been able to do everything that I wanted to do, but just being patient, and I still really like it here. But the vast majority of my time has been uh, at home. Okay, we gotta talk about some of these strike calls I'm not getting here. There we go. How was my winter? Make it out all right? Oh, yeah. Winter was fine outside of like five days where, you know, didn't have power and the polar vortex happened. Otherwise, I mean, the winter is easy. I'm ready for the heats. I, I have missed the heats all fall and winter. I didn't just move to Texas to get away from the cold. I moved to Texas because I wanted to heat. Bring it on. And honestly, my first full summer here, the heat didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. I'm built for the heat. There we go, and that is going to take us to the bottom of the ninth, everybody. Can we at least tie this game? We haven't scored in a while. Had a couple close calls. Colin Moran almost went yard, and now Joaquin Soria into close. And we have the pitcher's spot up right away. Well, I think here we're going to have to go with Kevin Newman. And hope we can get somebody aboard as step one. So, Soria. Low to mid-90s fastball. A curveball, slider, and a changeup. And he starts with a fastball up. It really is a nice stadium. I like it a lot. Get on base. That's plan plan number one. Step one. And now we're already behind in the count. One and two. Throwing three fastballs. I gotta imagine he switches it up here. Oh, wow. Fastball at the knees. 
I didn't think he'd go fastball there. Good pitch. Adam Frazier now back to the top of the order. He's 0 for 4. And Soria is just attacking here. He does not want to mess around. Playing on all-star difficulty right now. I hope to get back up to Hall of Fame again soon. Frazier goes the other way with a fly ball in the left. And it's an easy play. Well, we're down to our final out, and we do have the young superstar in the making, Cabrian Hayes. Could really use something. A single, a double, whatever we can get. There he went to the breaking ball. There he went to the slider. Not too bad, Justin. How you been? Down to the last strike. 0-2 oh to Hayes. And we're going back up the middle, and it's going to get through. An 0-2 oh single from Cabrian Hayes, and the tying runs aboard. Now batting, first baseman, Colin. Colin Moran almost went yard last time, and now he's got another chance. How much I missed that one by. <sighs> this has been probably my favorite game so far on 21. It's been really fun. Behind in the count again. One and two from Soria. Taking high. Two and two. Oh, I can't believe that didn't get the call. Oh. That's okay. I got a couple calls that didn't go my way last time. Payoff pitch to Moran. I got away with one. Moran to right! Oh my god, he did it! A two-run shot! This game is tied! This time he clears the right field fence. Let's go. Colin Moran ties the game at seven. We have ourselves quite the ball game. I, I have been waiting all inning for him. He's getting ahead in the count. I'm waiting for the curveball in the dirt. I'm waiting for the slider low and away, and he's not throwing those. I got to get someone warmed up. You're right. Cannonball from Colin Moran. And now we're trying to win this thing, but we could have extras. And you'll see the extra inning rules here in effect. Seven to seven. Who would have thought the Diamondbacks and Pirates playing on a rainy day in Pittsburgh would have the, the game of the day here? Yeah, I control the batter. Brian Reynolds. See, this makes me really miss, like, I, 
Reminds me of like what I missed out on the past year not playing the show much. Oh. Cause this is this is fun right here. This is incredible. Ah. He's been throwing high so much, the low stuff is throwing me off. But we're going to extras now. The two-run shot from Colin Moran. I mean, look how evenly played this game has been. 7, 10, and 1 for each team. And now we're going to have to get a couple pitchers warm. Bring in Michael Feliz. Yeah, I should swing at that one. I have had, I've been more patient than normal. And that's allowed me to work some counts, but also has led to me taking a few bad strikeouts looking. And two were that inning. I got super lucky. I even scored. All began with that 0-2 single with Hayes. And then we worked the count, falling behind. So, runner on second here. These are the new extra inning rules. The last person, the last out is now on second base. So already a runner in scoring position. A single could give him the lead. Oh, I can't believe they didn't swing at that. I took some hittable pitches as well. Yes! Beautiful slider from Michael Feliz. Is that a good spin rate? 2200 RPMs. Your attention, please. Oh no! <laughs> Don't do that! First of all, why didn't you do it earlier? And why'd you have to do it to begin with? Tim LaCastro, who apparently was caught stealing yesterday for the first time in his career. 99 speed, 99 steal. Is there a chance he tries to take third base here? On the ground, LaCastro to third, two down. Gotta love this baseball football score. Yeah, seven to seven here in the fourth quarter, a very defensive game. And now Escobar who has two hits. Seen some very inconsistent calls here from the umpire. Yeah, LaCastro doesn't matter now. It's two away. We take care of business. Doesn't matter. Could be Nelson Cruz on third base. A base hit scores him. Oh, Michael Feliz with a brilliant 10th inning. Two big strikeouts, and we're going bottom 10 to win the game. LaCastro's going to steal home. Oh, man, if he did that, I think I'd be done for the day. Here comes the relief arm. Are they doing a double switch? Now in left number 12. Yoan Lopez. Brian Reynolds is starting on second due to the extra inning rule. You may want to replace him. 70 speed. That's probably enough. And here's Gregory Polanco. We could end it right here. Lopez throws high heat with a slider and a changeup. And he misses outside with the first pitch slider. I should make sure make sure I have somebody warm. I do. Okay. But hey, after that inning by Feliz, I'd like to give him the victory. Polanco trying to go the other way. Now up high. He hasn't found the strike zone yet.
I'm not a huge fan of the extra innings rule. I talked about it a lot yesterday. Out of the zone again. We're going to go up to third base. He's in. Now what do we do? Bunt him home? Probably just going to try to put this in play. It's a 3-1 count here with uh, Gregory Polanco. Ah. Three and two. Crowd got pretty excited about that foul tip. Steal home. Up the middle, and that's going to win the game. Polanco with the game-winning single. Raise the Jolly Roger. The Pirates have won 8-7. What a game. That was unbelievably fun. 8-7 Pirates. That was a blast. I did not think that was going to be like the most exciting game or anything. I just wanted to see a couple different teams. But yeah, that's the extra inning rule. Personally, I think a good compromise would be to introduce the rule in the 13th inning. I talked about this yesterday. That would mean you play, you know, classic regular rules for the first three innings of extras to get through everybody's order, a full time at least. And then if you want to speed up, get the game over with, then maybe the rule makes sense to introduce later. To me, that'd be similar to like, you know, college football has their overtime set up. But once you get the triple overtime, you're forced to go for two. I think they should just go for two every single time. No extra points in uh, overtime makes sense to me. But yeah, that was one heck of a baseball game. Joining us here this afternoon, and we remind you to please drive <clears throat> home safely. Eight to seven pirates. Ten hits for Arizona. They had two for Marte, two for Walker, two for Peralta, two for Escobar. And we did all our damage here with uh, the heart of the order. Starting with Cabrian Hayes, Colin Moran had two hits, Reynolds, Polanco, who had the game-winning RBI, and Moran had a home run and one that almost was a home run to go with three strikeouts. That's like modern-day baseball right there, Colin Moran's stat line. My first uh, pitch strike percentage, 77. Second pitch of the at-bat was kind of rough. All I did is throw the ball down. They threw a lot high, especially late. Four runs in the first. Should have did it. Yeah, it's not that easy, though. <laughs> Chad Cool had a bad day. He's just lucky he didn't get the loss.
That was a great time. Not a cool pitching performance at all. I know somebody earlier wanted to see some of the menus and stuff in franchise. Um, I actually have a franchise here that I was messing around with with the twins the other uh, day. First day the game was out. But this is how uh, all the menus look now. The UI is definitely different. They changed some stuff here on the budget screen. Which I like this screen a lot right now. You get to see, you know, contract. One out of three years. One out of one. All the cap numbers here are the salary numbers. Very easy breakdowns here. I know when you're playing in your franchise, you will have minor league stats. It doesn't have like historical minor league data, but for instance here, uh, we have Caleb Thielbar who gave up a monstrous grand slam the other day to Justin Upton. Um, we have his major league numbers here. That's a five year gap between playing in the majors. Whoa, that doesn't happen much. And then uh, his AAA stats from this year. Like I said, they don't have the historical data there. But when you're playing in your franchise, you'll have these minor league numbers to fall back on. You can toggle them here, see all the doubles, home runs, triples. Well, I guess he's not hitting. I don't play all 162. That would simply take too long and I wouldn't make it far. I want to be able to go many years through my franchises. So I'll simulate games. I'll find key series I want to play. I might go into player lock and just play with one player for a few games. I'll go down to the minor leagues and play with some of the top prospects to get a feel for how they are and if they're ready to come up and help. But yeah, here's what uh franchise looks like. Byron Buxton, Kenta Maeda, Nelson Cruz. Free agents. You can go in here and change all the stadiums too. I had us playing in the Metrodome instead of Target Field. You can change the minor league stadiums as well. Injured list. Going through various teams here. Top prospects. Double A stats. I mean, Cleveland could be in the mix for a playoff spot. I don't think their offense is going to be the reason they get there, but they have some pretty good pitching, so they're going to probably be in it unless uh, the White Sox and Twins both really get uh, their stuff together because they've both kind of been a little disappointing to start the year. I thought both teams would have better records at this stage, but the Twins keep blowing leads, so that's not happening. Well, the fine Maxwell Fowler, I had to pick number one in the draft. So, we'll see who I end up with and where their first pick is. All-star voting.
I'm hoping to decide on everything this week. I've gotten the chance to play for a few days now, and I'll go through rosters and uh, compare all the teams that I'm considering. I've really enjoyed uh, the first few days playing the game, though, especially that game right there. That was so much fun. What are these moments? Hit one home run. On rookie difficulty. Not that interested in that. Are these all on rookie? New feature spotlight fielding. Start fielding like a pro. Oh. A lot of stuff here for Diamond Dynasty. There's an 84, your mean Mercedes in the game. You think you may be leaning towards the Pirates after that game? I mean, it doesn't hurt. Sh sure doesn't hurt their chances. We'll see. I don't think I've ever done a series with Pittsburgh anything. So, we'll see. I have a lot of things to figure out with that. But, uh, had a good time playing the show again today. I'm going to end the stream now. I appreciate you all coming and spending some time with me here over the past few days with the streaming. I, um, I'm i not sure how much more streaming I'll be doing this week. My focus next is to spend some time on the Kalispell Mega episode and get that closer to done. And then um, Texans week one tomorrow. That's going to be a lot of fun to do. And uh, more Broncos. And deciding on my franchise team. And maybe I will come on and play some more of these games. It, it has been fun. And if I'm going to play these games and uh, just try to get a feel for the teams, then I might as well do it on stream. So I appreciate it, everybody. That was uh, a really fun game, especially that Pirates one. So... Be on the lookout for some more content this week, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and have a good Sunday, everybody. I'll see you again soon.